Good morning, everyone. For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin today in Russia, where Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro is visiting Moscow as part of a series of high-level talks with the world's oil-producing nations. Maduro is calling on oil producers to take action to stabilize sliding oil prices. At an OPEC meeting late last year, Venezuela spearheaded calls for the organization to curb output. Saudi Arabia and others opted for a wait-and-see approach. Oil prices are now hovering around $50 a barrel after falling to historic lows earlier this month. To Colombia, the Revolutionary Armed Forces say they are ready for a truce after President Juan Manuel Santos announced that he would evaluate the possibility of a bilateral ceasefire. Despite that, FARC leaders call the intensified offensive against its troops contradictory. The peace delegations between the government and the FARC will enter their next cycle in Havana, Cuba on January 18th. The General Secretary of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, visited Honduras on invitation by the government. After meetings yesterday with officials, today he will travel to Copan for a tour of the ruins of the Mayan civilization. Here's our correspondent, Gerardo Torres. The General Secretary of the United Nations made his first visit to Honduras, receiving an award in the National Congress. When talking about the current insecurity problem in Honduras, he urged lawmakers to do more in the issues of poverty and inequality and to try to resolve the poor situation. Here in Honduras, I see three mutually reinforcing ways to answer that call. First, by boosting regional integration. Second, by tackling poverty and inequality and citizen insecurity. Third, by strengthening human rights. During the visit, he met with President Juan Hernandez and legislators. He noted that within a month, the United Nations will open a human rights observatory in the country due to ongoing concerns over human rights violations. He has a clear idea of the concept of what's going on in the country. He spoke about the constant human rights violations, the migration people because of the lack of opportunities, the increase in violence. And this is a country that we unfortunately have. One has to mention it because he was told another story, what he knows about what's going on here. Ban Ki-moon visit to Honduras will finish tomorrow with a tour of the Mayan ruins in the west of the country. The General Secretary assured that the presence of the United Nations will continue in Honduras, but did not give specific details about new programs. Gerardo Torres, Telesur, Central America. Thanks to Gerardo, protesters burned an effigy of Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto recently. They burned that at, at, in Ciudad Juarez. They called on police and the government to do more to solve the cases of women who have gone missing in the area. Police used tear gas and fire extinguishers on protesters allegedly to disperse them. The protesters come as Peña Nieto is visiting the area to inaugurate a sports and family recreation center for police. Around the world, the cost of reconstructing Gaza is taking its toll on the Palestinian Authority's budget. Now, speaking to Turkish media, an anonymous Palestinian official claimed the PA's budget deficit could reach $2 billion this year. An estimated $7.8 billion is needed for Gaza to recover from Israel's attack last year. The official also says dwindling financial contributions from the United States and European Union are also taking their toll on the PA's budget. And to the United States, as expected, members of the Republican Party in the House of Representatives yesterday gave a blow to President Barack Obama's immigration measures with 237 votes in favor and 190 against. Legislators voted in favor of an amendment which was part of a law to supply necessary funds to national security. Now, the amendment also stops over 600,000 migrants in the country from obtaining residency and work. Meanwhile, in Chile, two explosions ripped through a subway station in Santiago last night. The explosion shocked commuters and left the Los Leones metro station full of smoke. No injuries or deaths have been reported. 
Authorities suspect the blast may have been part of an attempt by thieves to crack, crack open an ATM machine. According to transportation authorities, the subway is now operating normally. We end today with a new photography exhibit that is shining a light on the Civil Rights March in 1965 in the United States from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. Stephen Summerstein participated in the march and now 50 years later the photos are part of a New York exhibition. In dozens of photographs, Summerstein documented much of the event with photos of Martin Luther King, marchers, police and the hundreds of people in small towns who viewed history history in the making from their doorways and the streets. Plenty more on those stories and plenty others at our website, telesertv.net slash English. For Telesert English, I'm Cody Weddle. Have a great Thursday.